I stumbled into a land of freaks. It's the Cooper and Anthony Show. Music Grotto came out with the 10 best songs of all time. I never agree with these lists. I don't know why you insist on doing this all the time. And then I have the top 15 pop songs of all time. Of all time? Of all okay. time. Because we're ra- we're ranking chart, writing, airplay. Yeah. There's a lot of things that go into this. And what the people at Music Grotto like. <laughs> so they're <laughs> right, throwing that in there too. It's it's not scientific, but they got some good songs. So okay. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll start with the top 10 best songs ever. 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 Of all time. Wow, that's tough. What, Go ahead. What, what, what? They what, say what, Thrift Shop what, is number 10. What, what? Really? What, what, what? And what, I kind of agree what, with that. What, what? what because what, it went number one what, in the U.S. What, and 20 what, countries, what, and the guy didn't have what, a record contract. What, what, oh, I didn't know that. Oh! And it was number one on four U.S. billboards. Macklemore. Macklemore. Yeah, when he came out with this, he had no record company at all. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty amazing. It's definitely amazing. And I think also, when he came out with this, it was a relatively new sound. I mean, rap was happening and like a kind of like weird fusion was happening. It definitely was very unique. So I'll give, I don't know about the best of all time, but. It was certainly very unique. Okay, now we won't say it, but we'll say not bad. How about that? Number nine. No, it's, a, it's a great song. Number nine, Kendrick Lamar, All Right. Yeah. Yes. Of all time? Oh, I mean, I think the top ten are all Kendrick Lamar songs. I mean, he's, he's so, um, everything he raps about is just so intense and real and deep and and you know he's a poet i mean there's a reason why he won what was it poet laureate or whatever like he's he's a genius he, he really is one of the few rappers of his generation that is at, at a whole other level yeah they couldn't get it off the chart that was the thing that song just yeah. stayed on the charts yeah all right number eight on the list best songs of all time you're gonna agree oh sublime of all yes. time, no. Well, again, it's one of these things where when this song came out, like now you look back and you're like, well, everybody does this all the time. They do it now. But in the 90s, when this song came out, when Sublime was doing like white boy music with a reggae feel, mm-hmm. it was really unique for its time. So you have to go back to the 90s and see that it was important in the moment. And this is one of those songs that carried over like everybody loved this. Yeah, so number eight, you agree. Number seven, I didn't think it was that big of a hit, but it was a smash. Well, I am at Britney Spears' Scream and Shout. What? This was a big hit? It hit number one in 20 different countries around the world. It didn't hit number one here. Number one in 29 different countries. I know, but like some tiny country that you've never heard of Going number one there. <laughs> Going number one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it's definitely big, but it didn't hit number one in the U.S. Like, I don't even think it, made, it got any radio play well, here. Well, number oh. six on this list, Guns N' Roses, Sweet Child of Mine. Yawn. Yeah, I know, but it was, it was a hit for the time. It crossed over pop, rock, and it's still... A great song. Nah, this feels like one of those songs that you have to pretend to like in order to be cool to to like all those people that don't like you. You got to pretend to be cool. Be like, oh yeah, I love that song. Guns N' Roses are awesome, just so people don't hate you. But the truth is, no one likes that song. We're talking top 10 songs of all time on this list. We're going to have to pull out some Led Zeppelin. And you have to pull out this song. So, Whole lot of Love, number five on their list. Yeah. You know, this is, I got to say, this I give this a big thumbs up. This is an amazing song. And the reason why it's such an important song is because of all the bands that it spawned. Like, some of your most, like, Queens of the Stone Age, some of, some of our favorite bands out there are what they are because of this song, because and of this band. There would be no train unless this song existed. Right. 
Yeah, so number five, Led Zeppelin. Now we're in the top four. Number four, it was okay. a disco smash. They have a disco song? At wow. first I was afraid. I was petrified. I was petrified. I yeah, this is a, okay, this is one of those big crossover songs. It's been in so many movies. Every drag queen has come out on stage to this song. Like, this is a really important song for so many generations of people. Yeah, even straight guys will dance to this song. Yeah, it's kind of iconic. Yeah, so... All right, I agree with this. Number four. Number three, another disco song. Because it would not get off the chart. them with the disco. It would not get off the chart. It stayed on the charts. Well, that's because it was, but you know, hang on a minute. But that's because there was nothing else at the time. There was really nothing important in music happening at that time. But this bass line alone should make it number three. Right. Yeah, just complete smash. Couldn't get away from it. Who used this? Who else used this bass line? I feel like this bass line was used by a lot of other, by rappers and other artists. Mm, no, I mean, they, they, take from that song and put it in their song. Diddy did it. A bunch of people did it. Um, yeah. It, oh, it was Diddy. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Number two, smash hit album, smash song. Michael Jackson, Billie Jean, number two. I was just two. about to say, if Michael Jackson is not in the top one or two, then this list is bullshit. Well, you got to look at Thriller and which song you pick off Thriller. And I guess you picked this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Because this song still, talk about baseline again, awesome. Well, again, this is another song that this riff right here was sampled a million times. This is one of those songs that has all the elements. Like, people took from it. It spawned other music. It was iconic. Yeah, I, I would say yes. Michael Jackson had to be in the top five. Number one. What's song number one? of all time. I knew it. I was about of to say you're about time. to play me. It smelled like Teen Spirit. I, I'm telling you, I knew you were about to play the song for me. Of all time. That's a tough of all time because this really speaks to like our generation, but I don't know that other generations feel the same way about this song. Yes, it was huge. No, it changed the world. So... Yeah, just because of that alone. Yeah. I'd still put the Beatles in there, but that's me. So I'm just telling you, like, Beatles fans right now are like slitting their wrists. They're like, what? Kurt Cobain? Are you kidding me? Yeah, but even Beatles fans can see that song. When that song came out, it destroyed the world and brought on a whole different genre. And we all looked at Kurt Cobain and went, the hell is that? Something we know a little bit more about, the best pop yeah. songs of all time. So I went okay. with the top 15. So number 15, Lady Gaga, Poker Face. Oh, yeah, I would say yes to this. Yeah, this is Smash. Yeah, number 15. I don't know if yeah. you would pick this as her number one, because this is her top song on the chart, but I guess maybe. Yeah. I feel like this is a song that really brought her to the level where she is now. Number 14. Yeah. Mark Ooh. Ronson, Bruno Mars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this song will never get old. Never. It will never get old. And and again, Bruno Mars and Mark Ronson have both gone on to do even more amazing music. So. But it started right here. Yeah, it really did. Okay. All right, number 13, when it came out, we couldn't get away from it. It was everywhere. Like Blurred lines. No. Not blurred lines. I threw a wish in the well. Don't ask oh, me yeah. Me Call me time. maybe. It was yeah. everywhere. No, blurred lines actually was number 16, but I started oh, at 15. Interesting. Okay, well, Carly Rae Jepsen did better than, than blurred lines. Yeah, this song Robin was Robin Thicke. That's interesting. Everywhere. And yeah. at number 12, Justin Timberlake, Sexy Back. Right. 
this, I, w- I would argue that this is probably his best song. This is his best song. Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't get out of the way of this song either. This is yeah. everywhere. I mean, even your grandma was playing this. Number 11, I don't know if I agree, but... No fighting. Shakira. We got the refugees No fighting. Yeah, I get no uh, Okay, so the reason why this song is important, especially Shakira, is because this was crossover. Remember, she was a Latin artist. And most right. pop music, right, most pop music was didn't have as much of a Latin flavor as it does now. Think about now. Think about, like, um, Daddy Yankee and think about, um, you know, Bad Bunny. Think about all the people now in the Latin community that really influence our pop music today in an important way. Shakira was really the first to infiltrate pop music in the way that she did and she's still she's still so beloved that remember she she, I feel like she spawned Jennifer Lopez and she and Jennifer Lopez together hosted um, you know did the the Super Bowl the Super Bowl right Super Bowl halftime halftime that's a football thing Cooper yeah a football thing yeah so I knew Shakira was going to be huge because I walked into a PD's office when I was working for a record company and there was this massive poster of Shakira on his wall and I went <laughs> if that song is a smash we have problems <laughs> she's hot as hell right right and it was so yeah. now we're in the top 10 number 10 where are they now outcast outcast yeah where are they at where are they you can't have a song like this and then disappear Andre 3000 still producing music. Yeah, but he needs to do his own music. Yeah. Uh, number nine is Robin with Dancing on My Own. Yeah, this was more of a big dance hit than anything else. You know, and, if you went to the club. Right, and I think it's a across the seas dance hit song. This, yeah, Robin is okay. it's a great song, though. Uh, yeah. Number eight is it should be his biggest song on the list, and it is The Weeknd with Blinding Lights. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, look, right now we just learned that it broke all kinds of records. It's the top Billboard chart holder for in the history. I mean, this, this song broke all kinds of records. And it's only number, what number is it, eight? Eight. That's shocking when you think about how iconic that song is now and all the... All the all the charts that it broke. Such a great song. Yeah, it's a great song. I'll tell you, when you're working at a pop station, there are some songs that come up on the playlist and you go, oh, God, we got to play that again. When this yeah. song was on the playlist, we loved it. Yeah, we couldn't get enough of this. We were like, turn it up. All right, number seven on the list. Adele. Oh, yeah. Amy Winehouse. Oh, that's story, huh? Can you imagine the hits she would have now if she was still alive? Her voice was so unique. I remember when this came out, my boyfriend saying to me, because you know, we were working in pop music, he's like, every song sounds the same except for that Amy Winehouse one. Yeah, this doesn't sound like anything else on here. Anything else. And it was just as good, if not better. Yeah, and number six was a song that sounded like every other song on the air at that time. But it was a smash. Got to give it up to Katy Perry with number six firework. Do you ever feel like I've been to her? I mean, seriously, like after this album, she just, her albums got worse and worse. I think about Taylor Swift went the opposite. Taylor Swift's albums got better and better, and she became a big star. Yeah. Katy Perry, think of it this way. Taylor Swift is still making music. Katy Perry had to go be a judge on American Idol. Like, that that was her next career move because her music wasn't doing well. Because she had to write her own album. So this album... Every she had writers on it. Yeah. So she needs to go back to that. Number five on the list. I don't know. I think this song is amazing. Everything about it. From the recording of it to her voice to the lyrics, everything. This song is a perfect song. Yeah, I feel like she was already on her way. For me, chasing pavements. The minute I heard that, I was like, this is a star. 
And then this song kind of proved it. There's a fire. All right, number four, you got to put a Britney song. What Britney song do you put? I was going to say, it's got to be Toxic. Toxic. Number four, best pop songs of all time. And it's because of this beat alone. Whoever came up with this beat is a genius. Yeah, she's another one. She's a hired gun, but she's amazing at what she does. And when you think of pop music, this is the song that comes to mind immediately. This embodies pop music right here. All right, so now we're in the top three. It's all females, by the way. Mm, happy to hear that. Well, the top, look at that. The top seven are all females with That's Amy good, Winehouse, finally. Katy Perry, Adele, Britney Spears. Number three. Vagina Power. Taylor Swift. There you go. And it's interesting. This is her first pop song. Remember? When she did, when she did this whole album... She'd been doing country before this. She came at us with pop, and we were like, yes, please, more. Yeah, this song. <laughs> but she has the same drum machine that Rihanna has. <laughs> Listen to the drum machine. Mm. The, the number two, because okay. you got to hear that snare. The snare is yeah. the high part of the song. Okay, now we're going to get Rihanna. Number two. Number two. Rihanna. Uh-huh. Uh, the snare. Rihanna. Uh-huh. Good girl going bad. Same uh-huh. drum machine. Take three. Uh-huh. But again, this is all Jay-Z. The reason why this is a hit is because of Jay-Z's producing and Rihanna's voice. That's what pop music is. It's the right collab with the right people. So there's Shake It Off. Uh-huh. 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 Same drum Rihanna. machine. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good girl going bad. So, umbrella number two. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No clouds in my stones. Let it rain. I hide your plane in the bank. So, number one on the list goes to Jay-Z's wife. Oh, I was going to say, where's Beyonce on this list? There you go. So, you kind of agree with this list. 100%. Yeah, this is, I can see why this is number one. Oh, yeah, give me some. Cut me a piece. Go away, Baton. It's the Cooper and Anthony Show. You see this whole fallout today with James Franco? I kind of saw it, but I don't understand it. Okay. What's going on? I will I will explain it to you because I've been following this story, believe it or not, since 2018. I think this is a really interesting story because James Franco is such a huge star. And more than a star, he was sort of beloved and like a sex symbol, but like not too much. You know, it wasn't like Brad Pitt's sex symbol. It was, he, you know, he kind of took the piss out of himself, you know, the way he would like make fun of himself a lot and stuff like that. So in 2018, James Franco was accused of sexually inappropriate conduct with five different women. Ooh. Yeah. Four of whom were his acting students. And this was all investigated by the LA Times. They're the ones who broke the story. So at the time, Franco went on Colbert and he said, yeah, you know, I read about this on Twitter. It's all bullshit. But, you know, I support people who want to have a voice. If you want to have a voice, you should. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wait a second. These women are accusing you of sexual assault and your attitude is they deserve a voice? Like, that doesn't really make any sense. Like, what's that about? We now find out that he's basically admitted to all of this Duh. stuff. No. Yeah. So he settled with two of the women for over $2.2 million each. Ooh. Okay. So now he's breaking his silence by sitting down with People Magazine. They have a podcast that airs tomorrow. Well, in 2018, um, there were some complaints about me and uh, an complaints. article about me. And... Um, at that moment, um, I just thought, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to be, I'm going to pause. Mm-hmm. Not seem like the right time to It's a good say idea. Um, yeah, he wasn't quiet. He went on Colbert and talked about upset. it. I know, but after that, he pretty much dug himself a hole and went into it. And right, I maybe. need to listen. Bad analogy, by the way. Um, <laughs> there's a... Um, there's a writer, I, I, uh, Damon Young, and he talked about you know, when something like this happens, like the natural human instinct is to just make it stop. You just want to get out in front of it and whatever you have to do, apologize, you know, get it done. But mm-hmm. <clears throat> what that doesn't do is allow you to do the the work to and and to look at what 
was underneath, like whatever you did, even if it was a gaffe or he's, he's, he's not going to come out. Spiritual and, now. He's yeah, not no, going to come out and say that he's addicted to sex. Is he? Yeah, he is. That's what's going on. Oh. Something wrong or whatever. They all do that. There's probably an iceberg underneath that it's a, <sighs> of behavior, right. of patterning, of just being blind. Of, My dick has a, a mind say, of its yeah. own. Yeah. Right. Just say I'm a, I'm a sex addict and move on. That isn't going to just be with I like the poontang. So. Right. Poontang from younger a underage girls turned me on. I've just been doing And it. they want to bang Green Goblin. Yeah. Four years, you know, and um Yeah. I was in recovery before. You know, See, for, for you sex. He was an alcoholic when he was like a teenager, but now he's he's trying to say that he had an addictive personality. He had a problem with alcohol when he was younger, but now that he's older, the addiction has kind of moved towards the sexual nature. Um, substance abuse. And um, there were some issues that I had to deal with that were also related to addiction. And so I've, I've so, really used my, my recovery background to kind of start examining this and, and changing did you? who oh, I was. Oh, really? Uh -huh. <sighs> So when you sexually abuse these these women, you were you were what like just um, working out some of your demons. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, so he admits to having sex with students, and then he admits to cheating on every girlfriend he's ever had. Listen to this part: attention from women, success with women, also became a huge source of validation for me. The problem with that is, <laughs> like. I'm sure you can guess like any sort of drug or anything like there's never enough you know it's sort of no. always the i was i, I talk about I'm like a sex this, addict this then. We get it. do you know no how much poontang is out there Scenario do you have there. any idea I thought, and you know i'm a star if i get this mm -hmm. he's trying to get all of it but he's trying to and tell us I, that it's because there, he has a problem like, well not because okay. he's a guy well, if I get I'm that. I'm famous. I'm famous. I have money. I was the Green Goblin, damn it. Be happy. And it was it was never ending. And it was... And I'm a hell of an actor. Let's remember that. He is a great so actor. Is, sadly, He's a very good actor. With, He's a good looking guy. People, you know, it's... Oh, if I'm with that... Like, this is all subconscious. But, like, if I'm with that person, mm -hmm. I'll be happy. I just and hate then, guys. Like, just, you know, own it. Enough. Own I'm it. Just trying to fill that hole and it never gets filled. So at, I actually it does. At around the same time, I hit the, <laughs> the wall with work. My um, that was a bad analogy. Sister-in-law Iris Torres given me a, a book on sex and love addiction. Oh, so he got a book now. Can, yeah, the the book the and, book is um, what he, he didn't he didn't know he was a sex for a long addict time, his, right? But until he read this book, sister-in-law. So yeah, I got sober really young. So like. I could identify with a lot because he was getting the wrong books before this point in in you know the alcohol exactly. literature. But like when I read this, he was book, reading Playboy. It was like, and they said, "Stop that! Read like this book." Bullet. Right, like, this oh, book is God. more better. And he went, mm, "No, no, get past the first chapter. You'll like it. Trust and me." And up until that point, he like, was reading as Where's crazy Waldo. As it is like right. I had inklings, like okay, maybe don't read this that. Is an issue. It's for kids. My parents. I don't believe James Franco has read anything in his life. I don't I think, think he's he even read reads his scripts. No, he's read everybody poops. I don't believe he's read any scripts either. Because <laughs> have you seen the, all the movies he's done lately? Like this is the end. You couldn't Stay have read that script their, their whole life. Yeah. So like, I respected marriage True. and like the, the Kim Jong Un in movie. He couldn't have read there that. Been a part of me. Well, that was awful. Even all yeah. through it, even at my craziest, where it was like, well, I want to. The room he read. Because he was great in that. He was awesome uh, in that movie. Yeah, he was awesome married. in that movie. I want to be in a Read the room. relationship. I just, I didn't know how. <sighs> That's what I every sex addict it. says. I really wanted a relationship. I just went about it in the wrong way by banging everything that moved. Is he blaming porn at all? He's like, oh. Not yet. <sighs> That's next. This is an issue that I'm not going to solve on my own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, instead Such of being like, I'm an drug. egomaniac and, I, and I'm a jerk. Poontang is a powerful drug. It's such a powerful drug. And uh -huh. I, mm -hmm. I got hooked on it for 20 <laughs> more years. Yeah. And the more, the insidious part of that uh -huh. is, is that I stayed sober from alcohol all that time. What's so, one thing got to do with the other? You know, One's a real time. addiction. The other's bullshit. To, you know, 
sponsor other people. And and so in my head, it was like, oh, I'm so Listen to how like tragic I'm he sounds. It's so, it's such life. drama. Does this help Where, him or hurt him? On the side, I'm acting out now in all these other ways. Oh, I'll explain to you I why he's doing this. It. Okay. Okay, so let me explain to you. So he admits to having sex with students. He admits to cheating on every girlfriend he's ever had. Um, he also says, quote, over the course of my teaching, remember he was an acting teacher, I did sleep with students and that was wrong. But like I said, it's not why I started the school. So he wants you to know, like he didn't, and start the acting school thinking like I'm gonna bang a bunch of like young nobodies and this will be awesome. Um, whereas the women were like, no, he made it seem like if I sleep with him, he's gonna give me opportunities and help my career. So it was like a quid pro quo, which is why he lost the lawsuits. Uh, you know, now all the encounters were consensual. He didn't rape anybody per se. You know, he did hold the power in that relationship. So when you're James Franco and you're saying to a young, hopeful acting student who's 19, you can help her career. Listen, it's not, he's not Harvey Weinstein. Do you know what I mean? Like he's hot, like women would bang him anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people are like, huh, why on earth is he suddenly coming forward? Oh, I see. In the interview, he gets to why he's really sitting down and what, why he's really telling us all about this. He was, he's asked about Seth Rogen. Now, I don't know if you know, but when this whole thing went down, <laughs> Seth Rogen came out about a year or so after the accusations and said, he's done with James Franco. <laughs> he does not condone anything he's done. He does not condone the behavior. He's no longer gonna work with him. Their relationship is over. <laughs> Which was a really big blow to James Franco's career because everything he did, he did because of Seth Rogen. Right. Well, so now you see in Hollywood, James Franco is struggling to get work. He's struggling to get attention of producers. And what's happening to Seth Rogen? Seth Rogen is becoming one of the biggest producers of television and film. <laughs> he is the go-to guy. He is the star. James Franco wants back in with Seth Rogen. That's what all this is about. So in this interview, he was asked about Seth Rogen. He says this. <laughs> Uh, Rogan was asked about me, and I just want to say I absolutely love Seth Rogan. I love Seth Rogan. I worked with him for 20 years. We didn't have one fight for 20 years, not one fight. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just don't give a shit. I'm just saying he deserves a beat down. He was my absolute closest work friend. Why are you ruining my life? What did I ever do to you? We just gelled. So that's what this whole thing is about. This is a mea culpa. He could have come forward at any time over the since 2018 and said he was sorry for doing this to these women. He was sorry for all of this. He's doing it now because from 2018 to now, he sees that his career is tanking. No one wants to work with him anymore. He's persona non grata. You know, he's, he's poison. He needs to get back in with Rogan. And that's what he's trying to do right now. This is what this is all about, in my opinion. I think I have a pretty good notion of what they're up to. It's the Cooper and Anthony Show. Let's see if you're in the curve with everybody else when it comes to Christmas movies. I'm going to say a Christmas movie. You're going to say I've seen it or I haven't seen it. Okay. Home Alone. Well, of course, everyone's seen that. All right. Do you watch it every Christmas? Uh, I'm not a big movie. Wa There's only one movie I watch every Christmas. Right, that's a no. What about Home Alone 2? Have you seen it? No, that one's terrible. Yeah, no, nobody saw that. Do you watch it every Christmas? No. How about Elf? That's the movie I watch every Christmas. Yes, I have. Do you need to watch it every Christmas? Yes. Yeah, it's not Christmas without Elf. <sighs> have you seen A Christmas Story? No. Is that the one with the leg lamp and the little kid and everything? Yeah, the Fragili lamp. Looks stupid. It's the greatest movie. I don't know why you haven't seen that. Uh, how about the claymation Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? I think I probably saw that. I don't really. Yes, I think I when I was a kid, I probably saw that. Do you watch it every Christmas? That's no. No. I do. I record it on, on, to make sure I see it. Chris, uh, Charlie Brown Christmas? Again, when I was a kid, I think I saw that a lot. My parents always made sure that I watched that one. But no, no, not anymore. The Santa Claus. I think that's another. <gasps> yes, the oh. Santa Claus is so good. 
Do you have to watch it every year? No. Actually, now that I think about it, my boyfriend has one that he watches every... We watch two movies. We watch Elf and we watch Bad Santa. How about the Santa Claus 2? No, that one's not as good. Santa Claus 3. If we didn't see 2, we didn't see 3. No, I don't... Love Actually. Yes, you've seen it. I haven't seen it. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. Forget about Christmas movies. It's one of my favorite movies. Do you have to watch it every year? Nah, not every year. But if it's on, I'll watch it. All right. The best Christmas movie ever, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I hate that movie. I can't stand Chevy Chase. You don't watch it every Christmas. You know, it's interesting. The regular vacation was on the other day and we were watching it. And what we realized immediately was that Chevy Chase is not really very talented. He he cannot lead a movie. He's good as like a second or third banana. But like in Caddyshack, he was palatable, wasn't he in Caddyshack? Yes. Um, but he's just, he's he's not good enough. He's so boring. Everybody else in that movie was better than him. I disagree 3,000%. I think he made that movie. Anyway... How about The Grinch Stole Christmas, the 1966 cartoon? I haven't seen that in years. All right. You watch it every Christmas now. How about I don't the have kids? You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're asking. I'm, I'm an adult. Isn't it weird if adults are sitting around watching that or what? No, I do. All right. What about the Jim Carrey Grinch? No. No, you haven't seen that. No, if I don't watch the original, I've seen it. But if I don't watch the original, I'm certainly not going to watch the Jim Carrey version. Yeah, Polar Express. Have you seen that? That's weird. That's a weird. That's a weird movie. That feels like a one-off to me. I've seen it, but I would never watch that every year. It's not that. It's okay. Yeah, because I can't tell if it's animation or real. It's it's it hurts my head. Um. Yeah. The Muppet Christmas Carol. That's a good one. We love the Muppets at my house. We're big Muppet fans. Frosty. I haven't seen that in years. Right. You don't watch it. I don't like those old ones. I feel like those old ones don't really stand up over time. I think you're high. Uh, have you seen the movie Bad Santa? Well, again, that's we watch two movies every Christmas. Bad Santa and Elf, that's what we watch. It's that Bad Santa is my boyfriend's favorite. Elf is my favorite. Have you seen The Nightmare Before Christmas? Of course. Okay, but you don't watch it every year. Not every year. That's no, good, but it's good and creepy. I like it. Miracle on 34th Street. I don't think I've ever seen that one. Really? I know it's a classic and everybody. Yeah, I know people love that movie. I've never seen it. It's a it's, it's a it's a New York kind of thing. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it is. That That's the one that takes place in Macy's. It's the Macy's Santa one. Yeah, it's the real Santa Claus. Yeah, I've never seen it. Four Christmases. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know either. Fred Claus? What is that? I don't I don't know what that is either. Uh, we don't watch that. Jingle all the way. Nobody's seen that. No. Christmas Carol 1938. No, we weren't alive. No, we weren't alive. Christmas Carol? No. That with Jim Carrey. No, Scrooge. Just forget about uh, Scrooge. Scrooged. Okay, I do like that one. I don't I don't watch it every year, but I've seen it. Stone. Die Hard. We're not there yet. Christmas with the Cranks. No. Ernest Saves Christmas? Obviously not. <laughs> Why would that be obviously? Uh, have you seen Shrek the Halls? Oh, my God. They did a Shrek Christmas. I don't even know about Trek, Shrek the Halls. <sighs> See, then that's a no for you. I love Shrek. It's actually pretty good. White Christmas. No, we weren't alive then. I never heard of that one. Okay, Die Hard. Yes, that's one of my favorite Christmas But movies. do you watch it every Christmas? When it's on TV, I don't go out of my way to find it, but when it's on, I do put it on. All right. And it comes out, you're almost a Christmas movie expert. Not really, but almost a Christmas movie expert. All right. See, what is this? It sounds like something I heard before. It's the Cooper and Anthony Show. I love this research study. Um, here's what we found out. We found out that there is a popularity gene. <laughs> <laughs> which explains so much. <laughs> Anthony, you do not possess the popularity gene. Uh, no, I, I don't possess a lot of genes. You know, that's true. Yeah, all my genes are old and ripped. <laughs> but, here's, but here's why this is a smarty pants study, because it's at Harvard. 
and uh, UC San Diego, which is my, my other favorite research place. They together have done this big, big, giant, fabulous study with more than 90,000 adolescents, which is like unheard of. And they measure indications of popularity, such as the number of times uh, somebody was named as a friend, at whether somebody is the center of attention or the edges of a group, that kind of thing. And they found that popularity is in your DNA. It's in your genes. And here's what's interesting about it. It works both ways because when they take it back to the cave, which is what they always do, the researchers, this is the explanation from an evolutionary perspective that people who are at the center are the ones who always have access to important information about a food source. Like back then, when people were at the center and popular, if there was buzz going out, oh, there's a, we found this, this, this bush and it has great berries and we found a great place where the buffalo are and we can go eat buffalo meat and stuff like that. People at the center found out that stuff so they were more likely to survive. However, people on the edge also benefited because if a deadly germ was spreading throughout the community, people on the edges were least likely to be exposed to it. So if so, you lived fast and you died young, um, or you lived horribly and you died old. That, mm-hmm. Those were your options back then. Um, but, Pretty much so the this, same now. Yes, yeah, <laughs> nothing's changed much. <laughs> <laughs> but they did, you know, they always do the twin studies, which I love. So whenever they do a twin studies, they can figure it out with the fraternal twins and the identical twins. Because the identical twins come from the same egg, and the fraternal twins are fertilized separately. So they can find it a lot more with the twin studies. And they found that, yep, uh-huh, it's, there is a popularity gene. Um, so you, might, you may or may not possess it. I don't know. I don't know what the test is. I don't know how to, I don't know how to test you. Um, but I think, there's, I think there are certain genes that people just lack. Genes you just don't. Like for me, I, as much as I wish I had this, I don't have the mother gene. I just don't. I've never ever, when I was a little girl, I didn't play with dolls and pretend one of them was the mommy and one of them was the kids. That was never me. Right. I never pretended I was a mommy. I never ever talked about, I can't wait to be a mommy and have kids one day. You know, if I met a guy and he wanted kids, I broke up with him immediately. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, I found lovely Sean Lee who didn't want children. I thought this is perfect because I, and it's not that I don't like children. I love children. And I'm very mommy, close. Mommy. I'm very close with my two best friends who have kids. I'm very close with their kids. And I talk about them all the time. I just don't, in me, possess the mother gene. I've never, if I have a bi- biological clock, it's dead. That clock is, forget about ticking, it's dead. It's, it's, a, it's a time bomb. Been it's, dead it's, since birth. It's been dead since birth. I feel like I've grown up without ovaries, without a uterus. So if there's a mom gene, you, you just don't have it. Well, I, I have mommy genes. That's different. I have the high-waisted, <laughs> terrible jeans that fit the you Jessica horrible. The Jessica Simpson ones. That you the wear. Jessica Simpson jeans. I own those. Right. I have mommy jeans, but I don't have the mom gene. Oh. You know? So what gene are you just so lacking? I do not have the what gene. 877 cooper I don't have the drawing gene. Draw Like to draw? To like draw color? anything, yeah. My, really? my father was an artist, and I have a lot of paintings in my office that, that, that he drew. But... I, I, I lack none of that. I, I can't draw a stick figure, and it looks decent. <laughs> I, I am the worst at drawing. I don't know why. And I've always tried since I was a kid. You know, you doodle in class and things mm-hmm. like that. But I don't have that gene. I don't know I don't know where it went. My That's son has it. He'll draw all, all the time. So the gene skipped me, went from my father to my son. Just totally <laughs> skipped me. Um, I, I don't have the height gene. <laughs> I don't have the height gene. Uh, my mom is short. I'm short. My cousins are short. Everybody on my side of the family is short. We don't have the height gene. Yeah, just skip your whole family. And and the cooking gene. Oh, I don't have the cooking gene. No, I have the burning gene. (laughs) And the the eating gene. No, no, you know what I have? I have the overcooking gene. (laughs) I overcook everything. (laughs) Now, Heidi, you have the mommy gene. Have you always had the mommy gene? Yeah. When I was a little girl, I always wanted to play with dolls. And even in high school, I was planning, you know, I I had my whole life planned out, go to college, get married, have kids. I wanted, and it pretty much laid out exactly the way I wanted it. But it's funny that you said that you don't have the mommy gene because my daughter doesn't play with dolls. And she's already telling me, I don't want to have kids. I'm like, well, you know, it's your choice. If you really don't want to, but why don't you want to? <laughs> but I can see that maybe at a young age, you already just kind of know, you know. I, I think that's interesting because the thing is, I like the fact that she that your response is, you know, that you know that's your choice as opposed to oh, you'll change your mind one day, which is what I used to hear all right. the time. Yeah, it's 
that's the great thing. You can do whatever you want these days. She wants to be a rock star. So is that what your mom told you is you'll get over that? You'll, everybody it, said, everybody really? said, oh, you'll change your mind when you get old. Oh, when you meet the right guy, you'll change your mind. They all expected me to change my mind. Like, I, I, I'm telling you now, it's, oh, no, no, you will, you will. Like, there was something wrong with not wanting children. Like, that was going to be a problem. That you have no, that the, your parents won't have grandkids because you just don't have that gene. Yeah, I th- you know, you don't want somebody like me having children, frankly. You don't want somebody that doesn't have the mommy gene <laughs> having kids. You don't. I think it, I think this is evolution right here. I think I think it all stops right here, and it should. It should, because I, I can't even imagine what it would be like for my kids. But your husband, Sean Lee, he's got the dad genes. No. If you can, no, if you can see me being a father, can you not see him being a father? You're much more fatherly than he is. No. Yes, yes, you are. You, I've seen. You know what? You, you he talk takes a big care game of you. Here. No, but you talk a big game here on the show. I've seen you with your kids, and you've heard me yell at them too. On the phone. But even you even <laughs> yell cute at them. Oh, okay. You don't yell real at them. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think you know, I think Sean, if the kids did anything, he would curl up in a ball. I would come home one day, and the kids would be running around screaming, and he'd be be like, "Where's Daddy?" And they'd point to the closet, and I'd open it, and there he'd be in the closet, shaking in a ball, crying. <laughs> Give me Prozac. Give me anything. I don't care. Just get me out of here. He does that now. <laughs> That's what I mean. He does that now with an adult. Imagine him if he had children. You know? <laughs> okay, so what gene do you lack? What gene do you just do not possess? How about you, Denise? I do not have the organization gene. I've tried. <laughs> Have tried. I keep thinking one day the fairy will descend upon me, but I, it hasn't happened. I cannot get organized no matter how bad I try. <laughs> and, and what's your evidence that you do not have the organization gene? Oh, honey, I'm driving in my car right now. You ought to see the piles upon piles of mail over my sun visor. <laughs> <laughs> but you haven't opened yet, or you have opened, or you haven't sent yet? A little bit of both. All, all of the above. Well, it, I it, say embrace that. I have. It's just might as well learn to live with it. It's me. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. Good for you, because I feel like, you know, the, it's part of accepting who you are. And God help my husband. He he muddles through, moves piles, and keeps going. Right. <laughs> That's great, Denise. Good for you. Thank you. Um, okay, so what de- what gene do you just, you so lack? 877-6-COOPER. Hi, Rebecca. Hey, Cooper, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Now, Rebecca, is there a gene that you just do not have in your DNA to save your life? Yeah, actually, the more that you guys name, the more I can start checking off, because organization, <laughs> I don't have, drawing, I don't have. But um, my main one is, is numbers, math, and just, just that stuff just confuses me. Like, I get, and the really bad thing is, is I'm a bank teller. <laughs> oh, no. So I have to be really careful when I do, like, people's deposits because, like, I swap numbers around and, you know, I deposit what you want back and, you know, I I just, it's not what I do. But I have a mommy gene. I'm a very good mommy and a very good cook. So I guess that's kind of what I should do. (laughs) See, it all balances out. But let me ask you a question. If you don't have the math gene, why'd you choose a career like Bank Teller? Yeah, you know. (laughs) Be a chef. You know, I've thought I've thought about that. I really have, but you know, things just didn't end up that way, and I just kind of ended up kind of falling into this job, and it was, you know, Monday through Friday, and I could be home with my kids, and it just worked out to be the best one for me. Now, the job I had before, you know, it worked really well for me. Like I was perfect with that one, but the hours mm-hmm. I couldn't work until midnight and have two little kids. Right. So, you know. If your mommy gene is stronger than your math gene, then it's better that you have a job that you could spend more time being a mommy. Yeah, and I just have to be really careful. So Right. Yeah. right. See, as long as you know you have, you're lacking that gene, you compensate for it. But you have it. to count money. Well, I can count money. <laughs> I just can't guarantee that I'm not going to read it as 98 instead of 89. Well, I think that's okay. fun. I'd prefer 98. Okay. That's where I sound very well, Rebecca. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but you wouldn't prefer eighty nine. Mm-hmm. Well, let, let me. What bank are you at? I need to change my money. And move it there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Chris. What is the gene that you just so lack? I unfortunately lack the heterosexual gene. <laughs> Why, unfortunately? 
Well, I mean, we do live in the Bible Belt. So, it's a little closed-minded for me. Well, I'm on my way out. I was going to say, then why live there? Uh, <laughs> man, I'm still young, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting out of here as quick as I can, trust me. <laughs> But, you know, I think you make a very good point because I, I have to say, you know, you are who you are. And that's that's what this is all about. I know that I have nothing in me that makes me want to mother children, you know. Oh. So sometimes people are who they are. I think I lack that one, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah get in line. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. And good, good luck wherever you end up. Rocky. Hey, Cooper. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Going back home. Oh, good for you. Now, let me ask you a question. What What is the gene that you just so lack? I don't have a mommy gene, and I am a mom. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I never played with toys, like, I mean, like girl toys. I grew up as a tomboy because mm. my dad always wanted a boy, and I was a girl, so he always, you know, made me like a boy. I dressed like a boy, and then one, like, after I think I got married in almost like 10 years after my marriage, it hit me when I turned 32. I'm like, and my my husband is, he loves kids. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, well, let's have one and see what, how it, I don't think my mommy can just come back. You do have the mommy gene when it comes to your kids though, right? Yeah, I have one. <laughs> one yeah. kid or one gene? Just one. Oh, okay, one good. <laughs> See, one gene, one kid. That worked out well. Yep. And, you know, it's so funny that I don't have a math gene, but, mm. but I do a financial planning. Oh, you do? <laughs> <laughs> I have a business partner for you. Her name is Rebecca. You guys should definitely get together. <laughs> See you, guys. Good for you, Rocky. Thank you. She's so funny. I love her. <laughs> I love her. I love that she's like, I don't have the mommy gene, but I'm a mom. But I have kids, yeah. But, I, you know, I almost feel like for some kids... Be it's yourself. Better but, you know, my mom didn't have the mom gene either. But I have to say, it's it's probably the reason why I am how I am. And um, I think I could... I think I turned out okay. You know? Well, maybe you don't think so. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hi, James. Hey, guys. James, <laughs> what gene do you just so lack? I lack the... Um, can't take the hint gene or <laughs> things like that because I sit there and my partner will be, you know, how they give you the look like shut up or, you know, like you're talking too much or whatever. And it's like, uh, okay, here I am. And I'm talking, talking, talking. And I don't get the hint gene. <laughs> like you stay at the party a little too long. Sometimes, sometimes. And it's just like, okay, you know, I'm a little dingy sometimes, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, James. I like that one. Now, now, James, your partner, which gene does he not have? Uh the um the house cleaning gene. The man oh. will not pick up nothing. <laughs> Ooh, that's so butch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a he lot just of questions. Underwear everywhere, snot rags everywhere. He just <laughs> drops it on the floor and then I've got to pick it up. So. I have a lot in common with him. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> it's like, please. I, I was teasing with him not too long ago, like the uh, paper towel holder. He will uh-huh. not put a paper towel, you know, thing, a new one on there. And do you remember that thing on Mad T, or I mean, uh, Mad About You, where Jamie had gone and, and uh, Paul Reiser would never put the toilet paper? Yes, that's my favorite scene. And she was showing him that, like, uh, and she said nothing, but she showed him every. I did that. She takes exact the toilet thing. paper, she takes the stick, she puts the toilet paper yes. on the stick, and she just looks at him and goes, like, voila. Like, <laughs> how hard was that? <laughs> I've done that to my partner with the uh, paper towel thing. Like, he's like, and he didn't get the hit. He's like, yeah, what are you telling me? <laughs> yeah, it seems neat. Yeah, good You're telling me that you're really good at it, James. Yeah. Yes, very right, good. Right. Keep doing it then. <laughs> it's like magic. Melody, what's a gene that you just so lack? I lack the directional gene. <laughs> <laughs> so you get lost I, everywhere you go? I do. And you know what? I drive for a living, so you would think I ha- would have an understanding of where I'm going, but I cannot even follow a GPS <gasps> when I'm using a GPS. I cannot follow them. Um, it drives my husband absolutely insane. Now, when you say you drive for a living, what do you do? Um, I'm an in-home therapist, so I go to people's houses. 
And you, when, when you say you're going to be there at one, it's more like you get there by three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always everybody to at least allow a window of thirty minutes because <laughs> I always wind up either in some dead end. Um, I've ended up in wrong towns before. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm just directionally challenged. Even with the <laughs> GPS, though. Even with the GPS, it tells you where to go. Not really. Yes, it does. It says turn here. Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't understand turn here. No, well, my husband no longer lets skater when we're driving together. He will um he has vetoed that with me. So he gets so upset with me and it's the thing is we're newlyweds and, and that's one of our biggest issues right now was when we're driving and I'm telling him where to go and, and he has that sense of direction and he always says, Shut up <laughs> I know where I'm going. <laughs> but Melody, I'm with you with that GPS because we had one of those when we were in Los Angeles last year. And, um, you know, it would say, this is my favorite, you'd be on whatever the big highway is in Los Angeles, it would say, you know, turn left on exit 42, and it's like, uh, you mean the one we just passed two exits ago? Like, it doesn't give you a fair warning. It doesn't say, coming up on your right will be exit 42, take that, Some idiot. Do. It matters which one you have. Well, this one would say, uh, you know, on exit 42, make a right, we'd be at exit 44 by then. Right, we'll see. Lost a friend. Come on, stop it. Come on, please. Put it away. Put it away. Stop it. Meet up with you all night. I can't help it. The song does it to me. Save a life. See, people are dropping. People don't want to talk to us now. That's what's happening. All right, so what's a gene that you so lack? You just don't have that gene. 8776 Cooper. How about you, Shannon? Hey, Cooper. This is Hello. I'm calling, so I'm excited. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Um, you know, I've said this whole, my whole life. I didn't call it missing the gene. I, I've always called it my mom killed this part of my brain when she was <laughs> pregnant with me. <laughs> but I cannot read bass clef notes. Like when you're playing the piano, I cannot uh-huh. read the left hand note. Right hand, fine. Left hand, I can't do it. Interesting. I even took piano lessons when I was like 25 thinking, you know, I'm, a, I'm an adult. I'm very dexterous. I'll be able to do this. Nope. And uh, and do do you, I mean are you a piano player by trade? Because what we're finding is that people, wh- whatever gene they lack, that's what they're doing. No, no, I I sing and I can play the right hand until I throw the left hand in, and then I can't play the right hand either. I mean, you know, I'm not any good at all, but I like it. Is but it I a coordination like... thing? Are you coordinated in other stuff that you do, and just not when it comes to the piano? Um, well, relatively. I mean, I'm a real fast typist and, and hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. But I can't, I mean, I look at those notes and I pick out C and I have to count and I, you know, it's like, it just does not, it's not there. Wow. Th- mm. I think that's fascinating. It's, it's, it's driven me crazy my whole life. But, <laughs> you know, I, even two weeks ago I got sat down and was like, maybe I can do it now. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play half a song for you. <laughs> Someone else play the other half, and if exactly. I don't look at it, it won't mess me up. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Shannon, thank you for calling. Thank you. That's very cool. We appreciate that. Um, okay, so what's the gene that you just so lack? You just don't have that gene in you. Eight seven seven six Cooper. Hey Lori. Hey sweet Caroline. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I couldn't resist. You have to. I, I am missing the tolerance for stupid people gene. Mm-hmm. When somebody just does something outrageously stupid, I have to say something. And my mother, I, even when I was a kid, I would do it. And my mother would say, just let it go. They're not as smart as you. And I'm like, I don't think I'm much smarter than the average bear. But, you know, it's like it just, I have no patience for it. You know, I'm the same way. I'm not, I don't suffer fools very well. That's my problem, exactly. too. And there's people out there that they see stupidity right in front of them, and they don't say a word. How, who are those people? How, how can you? I mean, it's, it's almost worse to see it and not say anything than to be the stupid person. It's like, how can you just let that go? It's why I love Sean Lee's new blog. And oh, yeah. I was one of the first people to give him a, a quote in there that was just amazingly stupid. You gave him the best one. He was so excited. My, my husband, Sean Lee, has a new blog called Stupid Galore. <laughs>
Oh, because I read that one, and it's one of those you have to read to us, and the more you read it, the more insane this person is. <laughs> yeah, you got to read it. I, That was the thing that was interesting about it. You have to read it a couple of times before you realize how bizarre it truly is. Because on the surface, you're like, well, what's wrong with that? And you read it again, you're like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Beautiful people are mean to everybody. Let's spit on them. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Except you and me, Tyra. <laughs> it's great. It's brilliant. Thank you, Lori. I'm with Lori, though. I think I like that gene, too. I'm not good you at so suffering like fools. You gene. know that I you, like you, that gene. You, that gene's never been near your body. And the problem is, like, Anthony and I will be out somewhere, and somebody will do something stupid you know, it's like a stranger, like we'll be, I don't know, at the coffee place that we like mm. and somebody will do something dumb there and I have to say something out loud so that maybe they can hear me and know how stupid they've been. <laughs> I can't keep my mouth shut. Drives Sean Lee crazy too because I will say stuff and he's like, you're going to get me beat up. Yes. One day <laughs> somebody's going to hit him in the face and it's going to be your fault. I know. <laughs> and you're going to sit there and go, ah, yeah, that looked like that hurt. <laughs> I like the don't hit my husband in the face gene. <laughs> um, okay, so if you're just joining us, we're learning that uh, there is a popularity gene, and some of us have it, some of us do not. So what's a gene that you're just lacking? You just don't got it. 877 cooper Hi, Joan. Hey, how are you? Joan, what's a gene that you just don't have? The warm, fuzzy grandma gene. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! You don't make the cookies and things like Knit that. Stuff? No, 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 no needlepoint. I, I have six grandchildren, and they're all lovely. And I can't wait until they come over. And five minutes after they're in the house, I can't wait for all, them to all go home. <laughs> wow! They're just, uh, you know, and I raised three children myself. I don't know if it's just um, uh, from raising the kids, and now you you know you see it again, and you just don't have the tolerance for it, or if it's just a lack of this warm, fuzzy grandma stuff. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of women, um, you know, they can't wait till their children have children so that they have grandchildren. And I told my kids, I said, I am not, you don't have to have children that make me feel fulfilled. I'm fine the way it is. But they all decided to have children. Just to spite you. Just to spite me. Yeah, they get <laughs> back at me. Although it's nice because I watch them And their children are doing everything that they used to do, so they're getting, you know, I'm getting payback. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that's why, do you like having the grandkids come over so you can watch your kids with them? Uh, Yes, because I love watching them suffer. Right. (laughs) (laughs) That's very good. Yep. Good for you, Joan. See, I I say good for you for being, I think if that's who you are, that's who you are. You know, I, I'm, I'm sick of pretending like I, I mean, I, I love, I love children. I love my friend's kids, as you know, but I know that I'm not the person to have my own. And I, and I, and I own up to that. Mm-hmm. I am not, I'm not a mommy and I shouldn't be a mommy. You know what I mean? Good, good for me for knowing that Wait. rather than being somebody that has a kid and you go, boy, that woman should not have children. <laughs> yeah, but you got to have the grandma gene if you're a grandma. All no. grandmas have to have that gene. Yeah, That's not they true. Do. They have to. No, no. I, I gotta say one of my best friends with the kid Dylan that I love that I had on the show before, mm-hmm. um, I don't think his grandma has a grandma gene. As a matter of fact, when Dylan goes to hang out with the grandma, we give him instructions what to do to take care of her <laughs> because she's insane in a good way. In a good, we, like, we love her, but she's, you know, she's 14. Right. She's 60 something going on 14. So we have to instruct him, you know, don't let her play with matches. If she tries to go out, stop her, make sure she's not drunk before she drives, like all that kind of stuff. Mm. <laughs> Hi, Davey. Hello. Davey, what's a gene that you just, you lack? Well, I am gay, but I somewhere didn't pick up the decorating or know the fashion gene because I absolutely hate shopping. I am kind of like the salesperson on commission's best friend. Then you might not be gay. (laughs) You know? No, I think that's definitely been proven, but I tell you, I will go into a store. I detest shopping, and if I have to buy new clothes, I, I literally pick that one sales girl, and I'm like, uh, you're my new best friend. You do not leave my side, and you absolutely have to tell me the truth. <laughs> to dress me, please. Exactly. <laughs> so. Now, I see. I have to say, I think not being fashion forward or, or decorating and any kind of stuff. I think that's the new gay. There you go. Well, you know, I work in the mall, so the last thing I want to do is go to a mall, right? And, and spend all this time there. You know, I get to wear jeans and t-shirts to work, so I, I don't have to like dress up or anything. I'm not even joking. Except for our friend Jeffrey who comes here on Friday nights, none of my Marys, not one of them, has the gene anymore. I, or, or ever had it. Except Jeffrey. 
Except Jeffrey. He's they the give only all the one. jeans to Jeffrey. He's got yep. an overload of jeans. He's definitely got it. I've been down to his shop, and I'm like, wow, teach me. I know. See? <laughs> he, he, he's got it. Whatever it is, he's got it. And I think good for you because you, know, you shouldn't too assume. too much of it. You shouldn't assume because somebody's gay that they, that they can dress you because it's not necessarily the case. Yeah, I, I definitely couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Davy. <laughs> but you know what? I'm with him. I got to tell you, we um, we're going to be moving soon, and uh, all the furniture we have in our apartment does not belong to us, so it's going to stay there because it belongs to my family when they when they move in. So we need to furnish our apartment. So I've been asking every Mary I know, like I don't know where do I go for furniture, what do I put with what, and they're like, I can't help you. <laughs> Call Jeffrey. <laughs> your place is going to look like your place did when you graduated college. It it pretty much is. I mean, you're going to have my... stools that are spools and. Oh, my gays are all so butch. It's not good. What, what happened? I need some old school gays. I need somebody that, that knows Jeffrey. fashion that can walk in and be like, no, not that couch, that table. Get that rug. I need <laughs> I need those people. Hmm. I don't think they exist anymore. I think that's old school gay. It's not cool to be like that anymore. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Keeper. How are you? Now, Shannon, what gene do you just lack? Well, I I was actually talking about this at work today. I cannot count money back, and then I can't tell time either. (laughs) Do do you have a clock that has just numbers on it? And so you have, like, which one do you have? Because a digital clock would help you out. Right. Well, I just assume I ask somebody what time it is. (laughs) (laughs) That's just much easier. (laughs) Or I just look at my cell phone, because I just can't tell time. Otherwise, I'm sitting there going 5, 10, 15, 20. I, I have to do it like that. Right. I, I can't do it. I always tell my report cards. My teacher always said, Shannon still can't tell time. I and do you, uh, do, you do, something, do, do you do something for a living that you have to be able to count money? Um, no, not really. I, I okay, that's to, good. I, I could just use a calculator. So it okay, that's good. That's, I'm glad to hear that because we're finding, because it, it seems to be, there seems to be a correlation between the I don't have the blank gene and this is what I do for a <laughs> living. <laughs> but I, I, if, if, if I have to make change, I can't count money back to somebody if I have to break like a big deal, I can't do it. There's just I can't do it. I think I'm, I think you're better off using an ATM card all the time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, with <laughs> my job, I, I have to count change back sometimes. But I mean, I just can't do it. I just have to say, okay, well, you know, you gave me eighteen, and you know, if, if they gave me a hundred and say their their bill was eighteen dollars, I mean, I just have to count back whatever that amount would be. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't count it back, you know, to make it right. <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. I trust that the calculator was correct. (laughs) (laughs) Hope the calculator didn't screw you up. (laughs) Hey, Anna. Hi. Anna, what's the gene that you just lack? I lack the girlfriend gene. I don't like to cuddle, and I don't want to do the warm, fuzzy, kissy stuff, and I don't want to go to romantic comedies. I don't want to do it. (laughs) And and then do you find guys to go out with that are comfortable with the fact that that you don't have the girlfriend gene? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's hard, but yeah. I would think guys would prefer that, because that's, that's also stuff that guys hate about us. Oh, she always wants to cuddle and wants to go to chick flicks, and they must love you. You would be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Deep down, we really want that. Yeah, I, mean, I really want to cuddle, and I just don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, at least you know that about yourself. Good for you, Anna. Thank you. See, that's, I think that's, it's, it's about knowing who you are. Okay, one more. Hi, Ted. How are you? Ted, what's the gene that no matter how much you try, you just it, it's just not in you? Well, I think I got it from my parents because I think they lacked it too, but I lacked the faithful gene. Really? Really, which is a tough one to lack when you're married with four kids. Yeah. Ooh. And now, wait a second. So were both your parents not faithful to each other? Um, not. I, I'm pretty sure. Well, I know my father got caught once. I'm pretty sure my mother lacked the gene also. Hmm. Mm. And um, is your wife aware that you do not have the faithful gene? Um, she was, but that was a while ago, um, and, and there's been some, some lacking of it since then. Is your real name Ted? Of course not. Ah, <laughs> it's Anthony, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's Sean Lee. Thanks for calling in, Sean Lee. <laughs> Thanks for calling in, Sean Lee. <laughs> Have fun with your girlfriend tonight. <laughs>